So I want to start with uh, one question, Sheikh. Um, what was Sheikh Muhammad like at 10 years old? Um, so, Bismillah, alhamdulillah, salatu salam ala rasulillah, ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa ala amma ba'd. So 10 years old, um, you know, when I was a little kid growing up in Winnipeg, which is like middle of Canada, and um, I memorized about like 20 surahs, which is something like half of Juz Amma. And in that little town, um, that little city, that was like, I, I knew more Quran than like everybody. <laughs> so I was like, I was Mr. Cool. I memorized, you know, half of Juz Amma. And um, that was me, 10 years old. I, I went to Quran school when I was 12, 11, 12. But 10 years old, that was just me hanging out in Winnipeg, growing up with my bicycle. Do you remember anything <laughs> about how you saw life in terms of like what you wanted to do or any like what you wanted to grow up to be? Anything like that? Um, it's, I mean, being frank here, the, the city that I was in, I was like the only brown kid in the school, in okay. the entire school. You know, like the one kid who had, you know, the name Muhammad and... Um, and I remember the teacher once saying that, or the most popular name in the world was Muhammad. And then, and then nobody believed that because they're like, Muhammad, you're the only kid in this whole school, in the whole city named Muhammad. And, and there was a very small Muslim community. But um, so I don't know, I experienced a lot of quote unquote racism growing up. Mm. And, uh, and it really kind of shaped me to, if you see me do things differently than what normal people did is because I didn't fit in growing up. And that kind of, you know, molded me to, well, if I'm going to succeed in life, I need to do my own thing. So. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Okay. So we have you, we have you in this uh, small town, Winnipeg. Whenever I see a map of Canada and the show Winnipeg, I always point to you. I'm like, the only reason I know it is because you mentioned <laughs> it. Right. And so you're in this small town. How does it go from being in this tiny town um, where like you're one of the few Muslims there um, to today, Alhamdulillah, where you've built something like Al Maghrib Institute, which, you know, Alhamdulillah is global. It's in so many different cities and countries and you have the top instructors and everything. How, how, how does it go from there to there? Um, <laughs> it's a big leap right there. <laughs> uh, I would say that, you know, my motto being in a small town is, you know, man, I got to get out of this town. Tracy Chapman, <laughs> man, I'm going to get, I'm going to get my core. I'm driving out of here. I remember one person saying, I was telling them, you know, on one of my visits back home to Winnipeg and, and they were like, Oh, you're going to travel overseas. You're going to study Islam. You're going to do this. And, just, and then you're going to come back here to Winnipeg and be the Imam. Right. I'm like, hell no, I'm not coming back here. I'm gone. I'm never coming back. So I always had this, you know, I wanted to go to the big city. Um, I had opportunities to go to big cities, Washington, D.C., and, and other places. And I took those. And in those big cities, I was connected with um, big players. And alhamdulillah, those kind of connections made, made a difference to um, raising my game and also, you know, spreading the word around. <laughs> yeah. So when you, when you got back from, because obviously lots of people go to uh, Medina University, alhamdulillah, but not everyone goes away and then starts something like Al-Maghrib on that level. So what kind of happened? Like when you got back from there, you decided obviously not to be the Imam of Minikpeb. So what, what did you do then? So I always tell people the, um, the story. When I was like in first year in Medina University, I had this, I was excited about what I was learning. I was there in Medina for six years. So from day one, I was excited about what I was learning. Basically, I had come from a background where half of Juzama was, you know, the most knowledgeable kid in the town to Medina University where all these amazing um, people, Muslims from around the world were coming together. And I wanted to share it. And I just had this idea, you know, when I go home, I'm going to do this night school and I'm going to get tight teachers and, you know, everything's going to be, I wanted to share what I learned um, from day one. And I always had that attitude. And alhamdulillah, again, I had good mentors in, in my small city that had big dreams and they were kind of like sharing their dreams with me and that kind of like built me up as well. Okay, so this is quite interesting because I want to kind of get into the mindset a little bit of uh, someone who's at a Medina University. And obviously a lot of people have said that it's very tough to be there. And, but how is it, why do you think that you had that kind of mindset where you, instead of like in year one, you're saying you were thinking about how you're going to go back and, and kind of use this? Like where did that come from? 
So what's interesting is that uh, I'll, I'll share with you kind of like a personal story that um, I was not the smartest kid in Medina University. And there were much more, and a lot of British students were much more smarter than me. But now what happened? <laughs> <laughs> so here's, here's the thing. So there was, there was one British um, student, and he's actually a good friend of mine who was very knowledgeable. Like this is a person who was like, always getting um, marks in the upper 90s and I'm like 70s and trap pass exams and stuff like that. And there was a time after when I graduated that I got invited to the UK and, um, <clears throat> and they asked this brother about me. Um, and then he's like, Muhammad, he doesn't know anything. <laughs> he used to, you know, flunk grades and stuff like that. So, so they retracted my invitation Whoa. because because this person's like, look, there's more knowledgeable people that you can that you can invite. And then later on, when you know, another and things got bigger, then they reinvited me. I'm like, look, I'm never coming back to your, <laughs> to your thing. But what 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 I learned from that is that it's more than just education. If you look at like Americans in general. You know, so many countries think they're smarter than the Americans, but mm. the Americans dominate. So there's something more than just smarts yeah. that gets you to the next level. It's not just, hey, if I do good in school, that I will be successful. That's not, that's mm. not the whole picture. Okay. And alhamdulillah that I, I spent years in the U.S. and I, I kind of like adopted that, that kind of like, you know, business mindset and, and, and bigger ideas and, leading people and stuff like that. I learned that kind of attitude from 